first they'll go wow, wow, wow. Wait a minute. Keep doing that. Take it nice and easy. Well, since I finished the pulley for the south bend, now it's time to fix this carriage. Look at this bent cross slide. Ooh, man, I hope I hope I can straighten that without breaking it. Uh, this one's in good shape, but just the cross slide. So I've got to tear this down. Now this has got a, a spanner nut, I guess is what you would call that. And I need to make a special tool to get that off. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is build that tool. I've tried putting a slot screwdriver on one side of it and opening it, and it's just not working. And I've looked to buy bits like this and I can't seem to find them or if I do find them they're way too costly. I've got a lathe, I'm gonna make it. So the diameter of our nut is about 490. Here's some 500 stock. I think I can make a nice tool out of this. The width of this slot is a 16th, 062. I'm measuring the bolt that the nut is on and I'm getting uh, 225 here but I'm probably getting some uh, radius or chamfer on the end of the bolt. This is probably a quarter inch bolt, quarter 20 or quarter 28 in here. So um, we've got to put a clearance hole for that in here of a quarter inch. Let's get her chucked up on the lathe and start machining. Uh oh. Can't be filed. I got to seeing on here there was some markings. One half HS, a C inside of a little four pointed star, and a U. And I'm thinking, this might be some kind of tool steel. This this broken off piece here, this could have been a boring bar. Nah. I don't think I'm gonna machine this. Oh yeah. That's the sound of a cut. Now this is a little small, but I think I can make a nice tool out of this. Half inch, same diameter that we need. I wish it was half inch all the way, but we still have enough meat to put a T-handle in there. I need to demagnetize this file. Not happy with that, still got an edge on it. That's better. I think I need to put the milling attachment on. Showing here how I quickly square this up close enough for jobs like this just by using a 1-2-3 block from the chuck to the back of the vise jaw. Hmm. I wonder, I don't think I can move this far enough machine on this side. Nope. It's tempting to turn this whole piece around because the hmm boy that's so tempting. Don't think I'll do it though. It's 
So I'll have to machine. Do you think I can get away with that? I hear you. You're saying no. No, you can't get away with that. Well, let's just see who's full of shit, you or me. I'm not going to be able to take a very large cut, but I think it's worth a go. Well, I've got the proper tool for holding on to a uh, machine bit on the lathe, but I don't have the right length draw bar. My draw bar is too long. This is from a South Bend or a Logan or something else. So I still have to acquire the tools. Here's my, uh, my C3 collet holder and my nose protector. And I got a set of collets here, but I'm still lacking the parts that I need. So we're going to try to hold on to this bit with a chuck. Now this doesn't generally work very well because a chuck, because the, this is very, very hard, the machine bit is. <clears throat> but we have a large, powerful chuck. My chuck's bigger than your chuck. This is a 3 8 or 375 bit. We got half inch stock. Half inch stock. I'm going to come in and touch off. And then we're going to machine down. We want to leave a 1 16th bar across here uh, to engage our spanner nut. So I'm going to have to drop down. Um, 250 thousandths is halfway, so about 30 thousandths less than 250, or about 220, or 219 is how far I want to machine down into this. Let's set a carriage stop. So I'm setting this with a 564 drill bit, a little less than an eighth inch. And let's touch off on the top. I think we're ready. I don't know if I'm centered in this direction, so I have to run this back and forth as I raise it up to the tool bit until it touches off. There we go, we got a scratch. I'm gonna reset this to zero. And we'll try a 10 thousandths cut. Then we've got to take off 220. There's a climb mill. Hope I don't regret that. Oh, yeah, I regret it. Take off another 10. A lot of vibration. I'm going to increase the speed. We're getting a good cut. There's no cut on the way back. I think 10 is about all I dare. One of the drawbacks with these milling attachments. There's a hundred. 
Yes, I've misplaced my nut here. I think I'm going to take a little less than 10. My cracky, I think she's gonna work. Hey, we're coming across the bolt hole. There's 200. We want to take about 219. Okay, now we're going to cut the bottom side. Got to come in and cut off again. Okay, that's definitely a touch. We zero the dial, and we want to do cut going that away now, and we're turning the dial the opposite way because we're dropping the tool down now. We're dropping the the work down. This I got about. According to this, I got trash all over it. Maybe that's what I measured as the trash. According to this, I got about 18 to go. So 65. I think I'm going to take a few more off on this side and then flip it over. Ooh, I think I'm there. There we go. That's a cut. 
street would look like. Okay. Well, fly mill shouldn't do that. Looks like we're about 61 and a half. I'm going to take off about another thou. I think I just got a rub. Oops. Let me come in from the right side since this might be the last cut. That's definitely 61. We should be able to use that. Everything a little bit of lead. Let's try it in the nut. I think that'll do it. It's not seating all the way out, but then that's a little bit of a damaged slot. Seems to go into that one farther. Very good. And the reason for the length of this is the dome here. Could maybe make that just a tad shorter. Perfect. Oh, and the reason for the hole being drilled is the studs in the center there, and these need to go around it. Now I need to put a T handle in this so I can manipulate it. I'm going to use this uh, center drill as my center finder, too. Let's see, it is 202? 202 thousandths thick. Okay, that's pretty strange. Use this piece of paper to find the surface. Oops, there it is, I feel it. Alright, now I'm going to zero my indicator on the vertical axis of my milling attachment. Now we know the bit is 201,000 thick, or 202,000 thick. So if I go up, I raise this up 101,000, I'll put the center of the bit on the surface of the work. So we're there now. Now this is 500 thick. If I raise this up another 250, I'll put the center of the bit on the center of the workpiece here, and I assume that stem is in the center, or close enough. So there's one. There's two. And there's 50. So now, I should be able to come over here and drill for my cross hole. Hope it doesn't touch my bottom block. Get a nice center hole there. This is a little bit of a low speed. 
to this tiny little center drill, so I'm going to be very easy with it. In fact, let me put some lube on it. Get you a little better perspective. Okay, that's out far enough. I might have another problem, and that is, will this big chuck hold this drill bit? Probably not. Nope. It will not. We have a solution for that. Alright, we got your ship right side up again. This is a small precision chuck on a straight stem. And that's a very handy thing to have in your shop. I've got a couple of these, two or three I've accumulated. One by the drill press, one over here. Let's see how true it runs. Look at that baby, look at that. Put some lube on it. And we're going to drill through that without drilling through the back of our milling attachment vise. We touched off, taking chips, nice and easy. Clear those out. Let's see something on the end of a bit. Skating around. Good one on drill. Making very little progress. And here's where you can break a bit awful easy. It's like there's something harder material in there, or the drill bit went dull or something, I don't know. You'll know when we get through the part and through the back of the cast iron chuck jaw, because cast iron drills really fast. Speed this up. Now we're going to turn some Rs. Hey, my. Tire feed gear train running all this time. Yeah, now it's cutting better. There we go, now we're through. Woo boy. Hopefully this won't fit in here. Uh-oh, it fits through easy. Well, I've got a solution for that too. So we ended up with a hole bigger than the drill bit. Why does that happen? I'm not sure I can tell you. Consult Tubal King. Here is my solution. Ooh, there we go. Our hole came out a little bit larger than the drill bit. Really the proper way to have drilled that hole would have been to drill it undersize and ream it to a press fit size for this T-handle. But I have these wheel collars here. These are used on model airplanes to lock 
wheels on the axles and they can also be used to lock a handle, a T-handle, into something. These are great devices to have around for your various needs. Cool. Now we have made a complete tool. Nice looking tool too, I think. Let's try it out on that. Here is our bent offending part. At first it'll go wow, wow, wow. 